That sounds pretty general. Um, show of hands, how many of you would like to have the test before the drop date, which would be next Thursday? Show of hands. Okay. How many, if it doesn't matter to you, hold on, you can vote in a minute, okay? If you're indifferent, then wait, I'll ask for that. Um, how many of you definitely want to have the test after the drop date to have more time in the weekend, I guess? Okay, let's put them up so I can actually count. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Five for after drop date, before drop date, one, two, three, four, and then, it, is that a hand? Five then? And then indifferent is the rest of you. So coin flip, huh? Actually, no, it's not a coin flip. It's whatever you want to do for the students. I could do a coin flip, right? Let me, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Let's see how today's stuff. Why don't I show you today's stuff? All right, and then we'll look. We'll look at. We'll take the poll again. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll take the poll again after you see today's stuff. Yes. All right. Last time we ended with. I don't know how we got onto the topic, but we. We were talking about base something, decimals and stuff, and if we had eight fingers. Anybody chop off their finger this past weekend? Yeah, did anyone do that extra credit and chop off any of their fingers? No? Oh, so you were actually going to have her do it, and she wanted to do that. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so look, these logarithms have properties, and I've already talked about a few of the properties. Now what I'm going to do is summarize all of them, and I'm going to give you some new properties, and then we're going to use these properties to do some weird sort of algebra. All right, so let's, let's just start going through the properties first. Um, first property, if I have log base A of 1, what was the result here? I know it's been a long weekend. Zero. And zero. zero. This is zero because... What is what is this what is this asking you? to what power is one? A to what power is one, right? And that's going to be zero regardless, regardless of a, right? So if you plug one into any log, you always get zero. I was in my Cal two class right before this, and I was graphing the log function, and I said, and of course, natural log of one is, and they're all crickets, nothing, just silence. They all knew, they just forgot, I guess. I don't know. So specifically, that, that is the most general, right? That is the most general log. Specifically, that special log we have, natural, natural log. log, then the natural log of one would be zero, right? As a result of that. Another property we have, you might recognize, log base A of A to the X is x because if you say a to what power is a to the x power then x must be the power you can also do the loop remember the loop a raised to the x must be a to the x a raised to the zero must be one yeah now what is that property written in terms of this special log this is not log base 10, though. This is natural log of e to the x 
would be x. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Natural log of e to the x is x. Third property, a raised to the log base a of x will be x. So I, this one was a little harder to show in class, but I did show that one. Mm -hmm. And then specifically for this special natural functions, this would be, that written this way would be what? Mm -hmm. E to the LNX. LNX would be X. Okay. And now, th those are things we've seen. Now let's talk about some additional properties of logs. These are new, all right? You have not seen these. But I'll continue my list. This will now be the fourth one. Log base A, so it doesn't matter what log you have, of x times y. So I put a parentheses to indicate that these two are together inside of this log, all right? There's multiplication between the x and the y. This is equal to log base a of x, and then I'm going to put here log base a of y. What do you think the symbol is between those? Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. I'll give you four to choose from. What do you think? Multiplication, multiplication makes the most sense, right? Because <laughs> you have multiplication here. It's almost like you're taking the log and distributing through to each one. It's addition. Okay, so this is way different than what we might expect. All right, and this is why this is such an important property of logs that you don't confuse this. So let me try and reiterate what's happening here. You have a single log here, right? Just one log. Inside of the log, you have a product. If you ever have that, you can turn it into two logs separated by Oh, yeah. Yes. Hold on just a second. Yes. Don't know why I put that there. I apologize. That's, yeah, it should have looked confusing. <clears throat> okay. All right. So single log, multiplication inside, turns into two logs with addition. <coughs> I need to get some water. My throat is like dying here. Um, I'm going to put the next one up and I want you to try and guess what it would be.
If you, if you do not change, if you have different bases, then this is not going to work. Okay? Yes, you can't, like like terms? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, I, I don't know if I should say this or not. Wouldn't you say that? You say <laughs> anyway, so. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I want everyone to pay attention. Not that I don't feel like you don't, but I always feel like this is where students start to lose it, lose it a little bit. All right? And, and if you... If, it's one of those things where it's like a, it's like an on or off. It's like a switch. You're either going to see this or you're not. Once you see it, it's all good. And you're like, why are people confused with that? But until you see it, it might be a bit of a, a push. So make sure you ask questions if you have any. And if it makes sense, then great. Okay, I would like for you to expand this. Log base 7. of x cubed times the square root of x squared plus 1. So what I'm going to do first is realize that I see multiplication inside of a single log. The multiplication I see is, is between, between the, root and the, the, cube. the cubed, x cubed, and the root. You just break it apart and then okay. Add okay, so this is going to become addition, x cubed in this one, plus log base 7 to the uh, inside the square root, x squared plus 1. There you go. And then can you uh, expand it more by bringing out that 3? Could we? Could we? Well, first of all, are there any questions on this part? Okay. So can I bring the 3 out? You could. Yes? You could. Everyone agree? That 3 could drop out because this is a power, so like x to the n? Is there anything you can do like after the square root? I don't know. Is there? Yeah, you can do 1 half. Yeah, you can. You can do like what? 1 half. Like the same thing I just did? Yeah. Okay. Before I do that, let's just all make sure we agree that that is this. And then the one half can come out, right? So the one half is going to pop out here. And make sure this is x squared plus 1 in parentheses. Because that way they don't, because it might, they might confuse them. Well, I'll show you. We'll look at the difference, and we'll see why it's a problem if you forget it. Uh, what do you mean in front? It is, it is in front of the log. Okay. So that's okay? Now, what I was getting at was you have to have the x squared plus 1 in parentheses. And here's why. If you do not have parentheses here, then it's just going to look like the x squared's in the log. And the plus 1 is outside by itself. Right? So like if I plug in, if I tell you to plug in x like is 2 or something, you would, you would say square and then take the log of it and then add 1. Here, there's no confusion. That is the entire argument of the log. It's the thing inside the log. It actually has to be there. It can't, it's not optional. Yes? Didn't you say uh, it's just taking the right of the cube one half and then talking about the x squared plus 1? Just this? Just that? Has to be kept in parentheses. How about that squared? Can I pop the squared out? No, no. no cuz it's it's in the log. Whatever you pop out has to be a power on everything that's in the log. And that's just a property of one particular variable. Yeah, that's because there's addition here we can't. Now, can I split this log into two logs? Yeah. Can I, since I have x squared plus 1, can I can I break that into two logs? Yeah. Our property works when we have log and multiplication inside, we can split it, right? But there's no property that allows me to split a log that has addition. So I never gave you a property that handled, like, let's say, x plus y, right? I did not say this splits up to be 
you know, log base A of X. I didn't tell you anything, right? That's because there is no way to split it. So you are, you are stuck at this point. Or sorry, uh, this point. You cannot break that up. Was that all right? Can we condense that? Yes, that would go back to where we were, right? So on the test, you'll be asked both. I'll give you a problem, I'll say, hey, expand it, right? And then I'll give you a different problem, I'll say, hey, condense this. So you've got to be able to go both directions with these. Do y'all want to see, how would you condense that? What would you start with? <coughs> you bring these coefficients, pop these up first. Reverse. That's right. We'll practice with a different problem, but it's kind of like an order of operations. You have to be careful how you do it. Um, I usually have like one of each. One condense, one expand. I'm sorry to have to cut it short today, so I'll see you all next time. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. See you on Thursday. All right, so let's do the same thing. Let's expand natural log. Oh, I didn't mean to put that. cube root of e x squared over, yeah, x squared plus 4 to the fifth power. Y'all well, did so well on that first one, I figured I would push it a little bit here. Well, you're pushing. There's different, there's different things that people see on a problem like this. I, I think a lot of people see, okay, this is a cube root, right? And anytime you have a cube root, that means you can raise it to the one-third power, right? But then a lot of people also see that you have division, right, inside of a log. And they think, okay, division can become subtraction. Which do you do first? The root or the This division is in that root, isn't it? Yeah. So you must take care of that root first. You can't get into the division and start using properties until the root's done. So I'm going <coughs> to rewrite this as the whole thing to the third power, like this. And now what? Can you? Yes, you must bring this exponent out front as a coefficient before you start splitting into two different logs. So one third is going to come out natural log of e to the x squared over x squared plus four to the fifth. Now you can do the division turns into subtraction. Does everybody see the division here? We've got you know, these two things. Yeah. What about that one third? That just stays out there. Okay. It's got to go on each one. That's right. It's got to go to both. Because this, this log is going to split into two, isn't it? Yeah. That one third must go to both of them because it distributes, right? Two terms, you distribute the one third to each one. That way, if you have to go backwards, you know that it goes to both of them. Exactly. So I'm going to have this natural log here. What's going to go in this natural log, the first one? X e, e to the x squared, right? right? The numerator is the first one. And then minus, because of subtraction, that's the formula. One third again, natural log, x squared plus 4, that quantity to the fifth power. We good? You could bring that 5 out here, couldn't I? Anything else? This would be a 5 thirds. Ah, you see a multiplication there, don't you? See that? That's multiplication? Yeah, so 
that log's going to be able to split into two logs. The other one you can't because there's addition. Good. Right? But you can drop the five out. Well, you just you can't split it. So it would just, it would be what, five and then you times in all of that? Or? The five comes yeah. out five times one third, which becomes five thirds. Okay. Yeah, you're just doing five times a third, which is the same as five over one times. Okay. I just yeah. want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let me move to the next line. Next line is going to be. All right, one third, but then I'm being told that this right here splits into two logs. So the one third in front, again, must go to both of them. So I'm gonna have one third natural log of what? E, then plus one third natural log of x squared, and then that takes care of this, doesn't it? Right? Minus 5 thirds natural log of x squared plus 4. Does that x squared go to that 1 third? Does the 2 come out? Do you want it to? Yes. Good. It needs to, right? That property Power on the x can come out. That's a two thirds. Anyone see anything else? What about the x squared? You can't separate. You can't because there's addition. Yeah. I see. Well, that's a factor. Okay. Well, no, it has to be a power that's acting on everything here. See, the x here is the only thing in the log, so the square is acting on everything in the log. <coughs> is there anything else? You can't do anything with e, right? No. Because hmm? that's in its most simple form. What is? So one third natural log. What is natural log? Oh, this over here? Yeah, that's pretty much like an simplest state. Is it? Right now. Close. Two thirds? What's natural log of E? One third to the power? One. Okay, so look, natural, we just, I gave you some properties, right? One, two, property one, two, and three. Look at property two, the special case. Didn't we have this? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's the power on E right here? It's one. Just one. one. So it's just natural log of E is one. The Wait, natural. Because the square is from x squared. Yeah, I haven't done that. I was going to write down the next line, yeah. Natural log of E is one. So that's really just one third out front, isn't it? This should be our final answer. One third plus two thirds natural log x minus five thirds natural log x squared plus four. It would be. That'd be difficult to go back in the condense, but it's okay. You'd still get the right answer. You just wouldn't deal with it the same way. Well, what do y'all think? That would be it. So how do you know when you're done? You don't have any more powers that can come out, right? You don't have any more multiplication or division inside of a log. And none of the logs that remain are things like natural log of E, where you don't have variables at all. Like, let's say you were doing a problem and you were left with something like, log base 416, like 2 log base 416. You could simplify that, right? This right here is 2, right? 4 to what power is 16? 2. So that's 2 times 2 is 4. Yes. So that you don't want to lead things like this. See, here we can't simplify this, can we? Can't do anything with that. We don't know what x is, so we can't. Here, we don't know what x is. Here, there were no x's involved. There were just numbers, right? So we should be able to simplify that out. What if you get something like this? As an, like one of the pieces. That's just a number, right? But you can't break this one down like this one, right? Three to what power is two? We don't know. You don't know, yes. Yeah, that would be really hard to go back from. This one would be hard to go back from. Yeah. 
What you would do is you would actually wouldn't even mess with that. You'd bring it along with you, one third plus, and then you would just do all your work on this. So your answer would look different than the original, but that's okay. That's all right. I wouldn't ask you to condense this one. I would ask you to expand this one, the one I just gave you, but not condense. I think the most difficult thing is just to remember that the natural log of E is X. Because there's a lot of things you have to remember. Yeah, there's a couple of things that you have to remember. Um, you know, the common ones are like, you know, natural log of 1 is 0. That's the one that people forget. Um, e to the natural log X is X. Natural log of E is 1. Natural log of E to the X is X. And these are just like common ones that you see, you run into. You know, e to the 0 is 1. That, but that's, I think that one's easier because we've seen something like that before we got to logs. All right, how about I give you one to work on? See how you do. Yeah? Do you want mild? Okay. How about I give you two? All right. Okay, so how about this one? Log of x cubed square root x plus one over x minus 2 squared. That'll be the first one. Next one. Natural log x minus 4 squared over x squared minus 1 to the two-thirds. Expand these. I'll give you
that is I thought they were going to be. Okay. If that's, you just follow your steps. That's good news to hear. Look right for your first one. <laughs> That's what I got. Okay, <laughs> good. No, I was thinking too because it's not log of x squared, it's simplifying something else like one log x squared. Second one though, give me the trouble. After I just wanted to broke it down and then follow the steps and then it worked out pretty good. But That's what I got. Is that what you got? Two ln of x minus four. Two ln. Like from the x minus four squared. Yeah, but what about that two thirds that you took out in the very beginning? Right, the two thirds should come out, and then it's going to go into both. Yeah, the, the two and then the two thirds times the two. Okay, okay. Got that? And then you and then you square the, the two thirds again, so you get four thirds. Does anyone need assistance on either one of these? Sure. Okay, so the first thing on this one is to do division. So it turns into subtraction. That's, that's where we're going with it, right? So division first. The second part of it, you can just carry out the two. Two will come here, and that's this. This, because there's multiplication, splits into two logs, right? The first log is log x cubed. plus this one is x plus 1 to the half because of the root. I got rid of the root first. You could do that. That's okay. Yep. Just keep the x plus 1 in parentheses. Does that help on that? You good? Uh, this is right out of the book. So, yeah, I mean, this is the level that the book is asking. Um, this one's not done. <coughs> okay, that's why I gave you this one. Yeah, you see it? Okay, so watch. This is 4 thirds natural log x minus 4 minus 2 thirds natural log of x plus 1 times x minus 1 because that's a difference of squares. And so do you see now that you have another multiplication right here? Damn you. So you can split that one. You see it now, though? Okay. If it's plus, you can't split it, right? If it was x squared plus 1, you couldn't split it. That's right, yes. What about the minus 2 thirds? It goes to both. So you're going to have 2 thirds natural log of x plus 1, right? You, let me do it this way. Let me just split these first. I'm, I'm just working on the natural log part. This splits into plus, doesn't it? So this right here becomes what's in brackets here, right? Then the negative 2 thirds goes through to each one. Now, you could do that all in one line, but I just want to make sure everyone's clear on where this is going to come from. So it's going to change the inside to the negative side? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. There you go. That's it. See, this splits with addition, but then the negative passes through each one. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So you have to make sure you, on your difference, of, this is a difference of squares. It goes a little further. See, I would have thought it would have been just x minus 1, x plus 1. Yeah. Without the negative 2 thirds going anywhere? Yeah. It would have just, just been, you know, minus 2 thirds, 
minus yep, I hear you. All right. You ready to go the other way? All right. Let's condense now. Um, because if you have something like the other problem where it's like one third plus, like you didn't know that that was an actual wall. So. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me state something real quick. The book, when you're doing your homework, the book will say, like the problems we were just doing, it'll say write each expression as the summer difference of logs. That means expand. All right? This book, they don't, for some reason, this book, they don't use expand and condense. And I'm not sure why that's the common terminology that we use for this. You know, as far as algebra is concerned, it's condensing and expanding logarithms. On what I'm doing here, instead of saying condense, the book says write as a single log. So you're condensing everything down into one log. Let's do one. log base 5 of x plus 1 minus 3 log x plus 1 half log x plus 2. Yeah, so you, you, you look at this and you start realizing all your coefficients, right? You can pop those up as exponents. Uh, sorry, base 5 on all these logs, or else you can't do anything. All right, so how do we do this? Yeah, is there an order we go in? Let's, let's, let's push these exponents, uh, sorry, these coefficients up as exponents first. Yeah, that's just pushing exponents up, right? Or pushing up coefficients as exponents. And now we need to combine. <coughs> I, I see two logs. I'm going to work from left to right. These two logs can condense down to a single log, right? I have subtraction. Subtraction turns into division. So this becomes a single log inside division. Yeah, yeah. It's what on top? X plus 1, X plus one on top, bottom? X cubed. X cubed. Plus log left base. To right. Left to right, correct. Can you make that issue? You want to go square root? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. You can do that. I'll do it. You don't have to, but you can. So do you have to look at it from left to right? You can get into some trouble if you don't. I'll give you another example. You'll, you'll hopefully see what I mean. And now you have, again, two logs, right? And you have addition between the two logs. So that can condense down again into a single log. What I was going to do is I was going to just warn you real quick on this condensing part that we did from here to here. One of the common mistakes that I see is students will write this instead two logs become one log. This is still two logs, right? Yeah. So they get the division part right, but then they, they still leave two logs instead of a single log with the argument being division. So just be, be aware of that mistake. Don't make it. This one will become a single log, right? And it's going to become multiplication. So it's a single log. I'm going to multiply this times this, and that's a fraction over there, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to write that as a fraction over 1. That way when I multiply the two, you just go straight across top and bottom. So the root part will multiply times the x plus 1, and then 1 times the x cubed. So you're going to get x plus 1 
times the root, which I can't do anything with. I can't actually multiply that. And then over x cubed, like that. And that's it. You have condensed it to a single log. Questions? It has the potential to become messy. All right. I want to I want to do something on this problem. Y'all ready? I'm just going to change something. One thing on the problem. Let's see how it changes things. I want to change this plus to a minus. So all that changes here is what? Minus. And then over here. Minus. Yeah, so now you're doing this divided by this, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to actually write down what that is. I'm doing x plus 1 over x cubed divided by this, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to visualize that as being a fraction. Yeah, so what's going to happen is it's going to reciprocal up like this. Do y'all see how that would differ? Yeah. You sure? Big amount. Okay. So that subtle little change in that sign would have that effect, yes? Can we write it like x plus 1 divided by x cubed divided by the other fraction? Like that? They'll old school division dot thing? Well, can we, no, can we write it like that, like in the blue? Can we uh -huh. write it like that as our like final form? Uh, you want to simplify that, because that's still like a complex fraction. You can, you can flip and combine, so. I mean, if you got all the way to there, you know, I'd give you a lot of credit, but it's not quite there. All right. <clears throat> How about this? Log x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 4 minus log x squared plus 7x plus 6 over x plus 2. Put it into a single log. You want to do some factoring? Yes, but we're condensing. We want to go the other way. So it's okay to have multiplication division inside of a log. We want one log. So since it's a fraction, you would do a typical split. Yeah, this is just going to be a single log, right? And inside of that single log, I'm going to have division, right? That's what's happening. And I'm taking whatever's in the first one will be the numerator. So it's actually a fraction in the numerator. Do you understand what I'm doing there? And then dividing that by the other one? Well, can we expand the numerator here? I think you mean factor? I mean factor. Okay. You could do that first, or you could wait. I'm going to do it on my next line right here. Is it easier to wait? Uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, it's two paths you know, that lead to the same place. So. Which is quicker? I think I personally think that this way you're, you might be less likely to make a mistake. But I think they're really close to being the same. I think they're real close to being the same. So you want to factor now? Yeah? Because we can flip first, but we can also just factor now. It's, it's your call. 
x plus 3x minus 1, is that the factoring of the top one? And then the one below that is difference of squares? 2. And then x plus 1, x plus 6 over x plus 2. Yeah, now when we flip it, we should get some things to go away. I'll flip it on the next one. Log. Here's where I am. I'm at x plus 3 times x minus 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then this one flipped. The x plus 2 comes on top. And then the x plus 1 times x plus 6 is on the bottom. That's multiplication. And just the x plus 2s? That's it? That's it, huh? Yeah. Oh, well. yeah I was hoping for more. We always go for more. That's right. All right, so you could, you could write your final answer just like this. You don't have to multiply everything back together. So you can just leave it like, like that. Uh, as long as it shows the cancellation. Yeah, as long as you, you show the cancellation. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was going to multiply it out until I realized that the denominator had three binomials. And I figured, you know what, eh, just leave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? No? Good. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's do something um, a little more involved. <laughs> what did she say? It was like a root canal? No, I oh. said, no, you said, let's get uh, more involved or whatever. Oh. Yep. Um, yeah, I didn't give you the instructions here yet, but I, I do want you to... condense this. So let's condense this into a single log. What about it? You could turn this into x to the half and x minus 1 to the half, but you couldn't pull the half out. And, and the reason why is because, yeah, you have addition between the two. Yeah, this right here does not equal x plus x minus 1, all of that to the 1 half. This is not true. You can't put the half on each one of these with addition between. So although this is correct as far as that is that, that can't go here. Oh, you want to put them both together? Well, that, that's different. We're, we're, uh, condensing. That's kind of like You're condensing. That, that's kind of like that x plus 1. Thing. Isn't this a uh, difference of It's, it's something, yeah. It, it's actually... That's what I'm saying. If you multiply it one half times one half, doesn't that get Do you want me to put these two logs together? Sure. Yes? Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's what I want to hear first. Let's put the two together into a single log, right? 
and that's going to become multiplication because I have addition between the two logs. Multiplication of this piece times this piece, right? So it's root x plus root x minus 1 times root x plus root x minus 1. And I think that's where you're saying that looks like a difference of squares, right? Yeah. I agree. It is. But let's just multiply it out. Can't you foil this? Uh, you put two pluses, you still get plus minus. Plus, yes, thank you. I did. This one was the minus, right? Thank you. So multiply here to here, then here to here, and do all that, right? So here to here is x. So you have log base a of x. And then what happens when you go from here to here? Shouldn't you get a negative root x times root x minus 1? And you can't put those two together, right? You're taking root x times root x minus 1, and it's a negative because that's a negative and that's a positive. So that's your result. Yeah. And then what about the inner one right here? The it's the same thing, but it's positive, isn't it? So they, so they will cancel. And then what about this one right here? Be very careful with that one right there. It's just x minus 1. 